I also want to talk about when you're doing hand laundry. So this is a laundry board, a scrubbing board, a washboard, and you, you can use this for small items. Uh, say you have some socks that are extra dirty and you're going to wash them. You take your bar of soap and you rub it. It's wet. You wet it and then you rub it onto the scrub board and then you take your item and you scrub the stain or where it's dirty over where the soap. That way you're not trying to get the soap onto the stain and that's a little harder to do. These come in different sizes. I have this one for uh, socks, um, small items, t-shirts, things like that. We have bigger. This is the bigger size. This would be for jeans, sweatshirts, blankets, anything that should need um, scrubbing and that would be uh, stains, stains around the collar, under the armpits, things like that. Because when you're doing manual labor, it, it's going to be a different uh, laundry show than we're used to. There are two different types. Those were the sizes. There are two different types. One is metal and one is glass. This is a beautiful glass one. Pros and cons of both. The glass does not rust. The metal can rust, but the glass can be broken and the metal doesn't break like the glass one does. So both have their pros and cons. If you want, get one of each just to have them. And these make life better. But if you don't have them, there, um, you can take, take a cloth. Let me just rearrange. You take a cloth and you can rub it on itself. So say you have a shirt that has um, a stain on the sleeve, and we're, we'll use this towel as an example. You would take your soap, you would rub it on the stain, and then you rub it together. That is the same action. It doesn't rub it into the other side. It just kind of pulls it out. Same action as using a laundry, um, a washboard. So uh, another thing with laundry, if you can, Dawn dishwashing soap I have found is the best for taking out grease. It um, you if you're using have something greasy or really dirty, I put a little bit of Dawn dishwashing soap on it and I scrub it in, and that is a really good stain um, fighter. And also when this is empty. You can use this instead of a peri bottle for um, when you're doing your toileting and, and you need a squirt bottle. I got this at the dollar store for $1.25. It's two in one. We have the uh, Dawn dishwashing soap and, and then we have the uh, squirt bottle afterwards. So have a few of these put away. Then for hanging the clothes, clothes pins. It's nice to have um, clothes pins. There are all different kinds. Find what works for you, find what you can. If you have something, use that. You can use a clothes line. This is a cotton clothes line. And I mean, it, it pulls out and it says how long it is. I was able to find this at a thrift store and I know I got 30% off of that, but um, you, I haven't seen any since, but I know it's for sale. I have seen clothes lines for sale in the dollar store, $1.25 now. And I bought a few of those to put away. I don't know their quality. I never opened them. But if you are really watching your funds, you can pick up uh, some clothes lines. And then you would string those out and use your clothespins and you have your laundry line. Another thing that you could use is um, a foldable drying rack. Now this drying rack, also I use this in kitchen, in the kitchen for different things, drying herbs and um, other things on it. 
and it's it's handy to have have more than one because laundry has to be spread out opened up and it wouldn't take long for this to be filled with shirts or pants um, I plan on having three at least and then you have these which help with the small items and you can have more than one of those at this point we can still buy and sell that's why you want to be um, aware of what things that might help you during that time I also recommend having plastic hangers I had changed all my hangers out to those felt ones um, but those won't work with hanging laundry I I think it would just ruin the felt and maybe the dye black dye would get all over it anyway these are sturdy and they're good for hanging shirts or jackets and you can lay something over it and hang it up and if you had a line you could that was uh, strong enough you could hang clothes on that a wire or something like that in your house there are also clotheslines and I've noticed them in videos from Europe that come down from the ceiling and they they fold up to the ceiling come down from the ceiling and you can hang things on them and my plan will be for my husband to he doesn't know this yet but to build something like that and attach to the ceiling and then that can come down in close proximity because your floor space is precious we're going to have a lot of stuff in the floor space but um if you have something coming down from the ceiling you can uh use that for drying your clothes. I've also dried blankets over the railing of my deck and in the summertime and also use your shower curtain rod. You can um, dry things hanging over the shower curtain rod, blankets or whatever if you're drying those or you can use the plastic hangers and hang up on your curtain rod. Make sure it's tight though. You don't want it to fall but that is a good thing especially if something's dripping it just drips right into the uh, shower or the tub so we've covered these oh the clothesline outside you can have clotheslines outside they make them all different ways and they make some that you pull and the laundry comes to you and they have the straight clothesline where you just go from hanging to the next space and I have one that you can pull from the um, from its case that's attached to the wall you can pull it out and then attach it with a hook onto something that one I might have put into my home also in a cabinet open the door pull the um, clothesline out and attach it to a hook on another wall and then I've got a retractable clothesline in the house. If you have a passion to iron, there is a very nice alternative to a plug-in iron. This is an off-grid iron. It's one of the old ways that they used to do it. And they ironed everything, if I remember right from reading history. Uh, you have the top of the iron. This is detached from the bottom that is heating on the stove. That is the part that will be applying the heat to your clothing. You take the top part, you put it on to the hot, lock it in place, and this is your iron. Never touch this part. Just like an irregular iron, you don't touch the bottom. You would go over and iron what you had to do, just like this. And then when it cooled, you would put it back on the stove or a lot of times they had two. There's another one over there. They had the second one heating up. They would just switch them and um, finish their ironing that way. So there was never any leg time while they were waiting for it to heat. If your uh, clothes are wrinkled and they're resisting, you can have a spritz bottle and spritz a little water and that should help with the ironing house so these are just ideas you do what works for you but um just make sure you think about it and do something to be aware of new videos like this one be sure to subscribe to the preparing for the time of trouble channel
For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.